Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to talk about charged and even uncharged insulators. How do they act differently than charged and uncharged uh, conductors? Well, for one thing, if you take an insulator like this and you charge it, instead of having the charge only reside on the surface, the charge really resides pretty well everywhere throughout the, the insulator. And so there's no rush of charges towards the surface because in insulators, charges don't move very readily, and so they can't simply just migrate towards the surface. They tend to stay pretty well locked within the material. There may be a small amount of migration, but it's very, very minor. Let's say on the other side here, far away, we have an uncharged conductor. I may have to put a D in there, uncharged conductor. And what happens now when you bring the insulator close? Well, just like the same thing would happen if you brought a charged conductor close, it's going to affect the charges on the conductor here, the uncharged uh, conductor, and so the negative charges will feel attracted towards the positive insulator, so they'll start migrating towards the surface here, that leaves you with an excess of positive charge on the other side, so there's going to be a force of attraction between the two. Now what if we have a charged conductor, and of course with a charged conductor all the charges will reside on the surface, and we bring it closer to an uncharged insulator. Well these little things in there. They're supposed to represent molecules and molecules will have of course a certain orientation and in most cases molecules are somewhat polar. They're, most molecules tend to have a polar property to it which means that one side is a little bit more negative and the other side is a little bit more positive at the molecular level. Now when you bring an object close by that is positively charged, for example, that what happens is that these molecules, which are slightly polar, will try to bend in such a way that the negative end of the molecule will be closer to that charged object and the positive end of the molecule will be farther away because the negative ends get attracted, the positive ends get, get repelled, and so all the molecules tend to try to bend over a little bit towards making an alignment such that on average the negative sides are slightly closer to the charged object than the positive sides and the, the insulator becomes somewhat polarized to a small amount, not nearly as much as a conductor where charges can freely move. But the, the net result is that the one side will be slightly more negative than the other side and the slightly more negative side being closer to the charged conductor, there will be a small amount of force of attraction, not nearly as strong as what you find in something like this. But there will be a small amount of attraction there. And notice, because the positive ends are a little bit farther away and the negative ends are a little bit closer to the conductor. So that's how insulators tend to act that are either charged or that are uncharged in the presence of other chargers. Charges, I should say. And that's how it happens.